So again, um, that's uh, an example of using a data flow diagram to represent a system. And again, we started from a, uh, a description of the helicopter attitude control system from the plane. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we've talked about data flow diagrams. Um, there are also something called control flow diagrams. Um, and um, just like data flow diagrams analyzes the data flow through a system. Um, the control flow diagrams analyze the control flow. And what we mean by control flow is events and actions. And, uh, and these determine their dynamics. Okay, So again, like the data flow diagrams emphasizes the flow of data, the control flow diagrams emphasize the flow of control. Um, and control transformations are represented by um, um, a state transition diagrams, which are attached to the control flow diagrams. So here is a control transformation. Again, it's represented by a dotted line and a circle. The Remember, the data transformation was a solid circle. So this is how we represent a control transformation. Um, and uh, generally, again, the, this then has a some sort of timing specification. What's going to what's going to happen when, and that's a perfect example for a uh, state transition diagram. And that's what we mean here is these control transformations are defined by an attached STD. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now dynamic behavior is explicitly indicated in these things. Events and actions now look as dotted arrows so they're uh, that uh, show again just like we saw data flow through a data flow diagram these is the the flow of events and actions and you can have control stores um, you know you can store eff effectively um, events and actions or at least a record of their uh, appearance okay now <clears throat> how does this stuff um, uh, work in the case of use of a control flow diagram. Well, the control flow diagram doesn't have much value unless we link it with a data flow diagram. Uh, because that's really what's telling us is how the data is moving. Um, and so what we're going to call this is a real-time data flow diagram. When you have a control flow diagram linked with a data flow diagram, um, and so now we have to have a little bit more information. Um, and so we need some what are called synchronization prompts. Um, and there are three types of these prompts. Um, <clears throat> they're represented by a double-headed arrow. It's, again, a da dashed arrow because these are formally part of the control flow diagram. Yet they show connection. They show the links, the explicit links, to the data flow component. Um, and then they're labeled um, with either an E, a T, or an A to represent the enable, disable. Um, the trigger is the T. So E represents an enable, disable prompt. Um, T represents a trigger prompt. And A represents an activator prompt. And what these mean is um, they then say um, <clears throat> the when, how these synchronization prompts are active. So a trigger prompt just simply is a one-shot that, that it is a, a one-shot event that is generated as a function of the um, variable that just triggers a particular data transformation process in the data flow diagram. Okay, and likewise, um, a trigger prompt, again, is a one-shot that just says, okay, trigger now. An enable-disable prompt is one that says, turn on now and run, then disable or turn off. Um, and then finally, the activator prompt is uh, one that just says, for the duration of a state, um, a particular data process, a data transformation is active. In other words, it's doing its thing um, while you're in that state. But as soon as you transition out of that state, an event happens to transition you out of that state, well then, that's when it deactivates. Um, now, <clears throat> the double arrow, and i got to point that out, if we back up to this description, 
The single arrow is a discrete time data flow. The double arrow represented a continuous time data flow. Um, whereas here, the double arrow represents um, the uh, uh, prompt. Okay? And again, it's the prompts that couple the CFD to the DFD. And uh, we'll talk about what that means right now. So remember, this just shows data flow. It doesn't show when. Okay? And so that is the purpose of the control flow diagram. It is saying when these various compensation, these data transformations, which is really what software is about, right? Software instructions take data and they transform it. Um, so um, these guys, the sources and sinks, they represent the sensors and the actuators. Um, the, the processes, again, represent software algorithms. And then these represent variables. Um, so that's what, how these things are tied together. Um, and then the control transformation simply says, okay, this is when you are going to operate. And these are all trigger prompts, okay, that represent when these functions, remember, they are just one-shot prompts. Is you get a signal, <clears throat> which is a, a trigger um, that then causes these software root subroutines, if you, if you like, um, to execute. And then these, of course, are named. So this trigger is called Compensate Gyro. By the way, um, there's an inputs as well as outputs. So a five millimeter tick is an event that comes in. And then um, the activator prompts, or the, I'm sorry, the trigger prompt goes out and, and it has a name, which is Compensate Gyro. So this is a five millimeter tick that comes in. So we get this event that every five milliseconds, we get a new event coming into the control um, transformation, which again is defined by these state transition diagrams. And then you have these five um, triggers, which then make this happen, makes that happen, makes that happen, that happen, and that happen, okay? Now, remember, the name associated with these trigger prompts then is what's going to show up in our state transition diagram. So here is an example of two possible representations, sets of state transition diagrams that provide the um, action. The, remember, the state here is, it's just, um, it counts ticks modulo 8. Um, and then we see that there are two transitions. Um, one is every eighth tick. Um, we're going to transition here, and here are the outputs. They're the trigger prompts. Here's the T. We're going to reset the counter. Um, which is counting up from the number of five millisecond ticks. And on the eighth one, we're going to reset that counter, and we're going to trigger these four um, prompts. Compensate the accelerometers, um, compensate the gyro, calculate position, and torque, um, gyro, uh, torque gyro. So again, these are compensate the gyro, compensate the excel, um, um, calc position, and torque the gyro. Okay, so we're going to calc the position, torque the gyros. The only one that's not in that um, state transition diagram is the update display. So when does that happen? Ah, over here we say update display happens every two hundredths tick. So these are happening. Remember, our tick is every five milliseconds. So there's 40 milliseconds um, that these, uh, these things are happening. And then... Um, it's um, every second, so every 200 5 millisecond, um, 200 of the 5 millisecond periods, ticks, have come in, right, which is a total of one second. So um, you count up, and you're constantly, all you're doing is incrementing the counter, 
for any other tick, you're just going to increment the counter. And then when the counter um, goes up to the 200th tick, you're going to reset it and update the supply. So basically that says, and that generates this trigger prompt here, um, and that trigger prompt update display is, sure enough, is this trigger prompt here, which means we're going to update display once a second. And that means take this data from the accelera um, um, acceleration um, data store and the position and attitude and put it on this slide. Okay. So now we have a complete specification that tells how the data flows through the system and when it flows through the system. That's the key. The control flow diagram is saying when things are happening and the um, uh, data flow diagram is saying how the data is being transformed, stored, and moved through the system. So you put those two together, and now this is a powerful way um, to uh, describe what we're doing. Okay. And uh, again, these state transition diagrams, this is another, um, another topology that represents the same thing. Um, well, I only showed this one, right? Is it's going through eight ticks, right? There are eight different states, one, two, six, seven, eight, right? Double line is our start, um, start state. Um, and uh, so what's happening there is you can imagine that each one of these transitions is going to be a tick and <clears throat> the outcome, the output of each tick is going to be you're going to increment the counter and you're going to compensate the accelerometer, right? Update the counter, compensate the accelerometer, update the counter, compensate the accelerometer, right? Until here, you're going to update the counter uh, well, you, then you're going to do this eighth tick, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's the eighth tick. Um, the output is we're going to reset the counter and we're going to do a trigger prompts to compensate for the accelerometers, compensate for the gyro, compensate our calc position and torque gyros, okay? Again, this one would have a ring of 200 um, clocks. Uh, or states, I'm sorry.